Delighted to say lockdown is over here in England so I'm out pottery hunting again. Now this morning I'm not on the Thames um, but I'm in the wilds of Kent and going to go um, out onto the mudflats of the Medway with the father and daughter mudlarkers, the mud pies. Hello, Hello. good morning. <laughs> in the wilds of Kent with Josie and Andy, father and daughter mudlarking team who are the Mud pies! Mud pies. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we're hoping to pick up some Roman bits today, which is always exciting. So let's see what we find. Let's, let's yeah. get some juicy treasure. Fingers crossed. Yeah, we'll get stuck. Okay, it's always good to be aware of the tides and deep mud, which is why we are wearing these natty patterns <laughs> to spread the load. Pattern it. <laughs> Which feels a bit strange at first, but we'll definitely save a lot of hassle later and able to get access to places you can't normally get to safely. Well, we've made it out to the island where you can pick up Roman bits and I must say it has been a bit of an ordeal. Uh, I've got stuck in my mud, stuck in mud, lost a boot, crawled around on my hands and knees for about 100 yards, but we're here. There's this like wicker work boundary fence or walkway and it's sort of packed with clay. I've no idea how old it is. But it's very interesting and there's bits of pottery. We've already picked up a bit of Roman, um, but it's mixed in with Vic Victorian finds as well. Victorian and Roman mixed up, so that's quite a nice combination. Hey, Hello. Josie. Later. Right, we have found Roman, a beautiful rim and a beautiful body shard. Uh, this is quite coarse wear. Um, so it, I had to have a look at the fabric, but it might be tempered with grog, which is broken pottery, um, and fired in quite a simple kiln, so you've got different colours of surface, but that's a beautiful rim. Great, good find, and home to marine life as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, right. So here we have 1,900 years of history in two handfuls. So we have Andy's nose cone from the Second World War. You can see the dry rings there, probably from an anti-aircraft shell. Uh, and then you've got Joseph's fire, which is a beautiful piece. London style wear, so it's got compass drawn circles and lines on it. And that is a very, very, for its time, that would have been an expensive pot. That's the Everbridge water of the Roman world and that would have graced the table of <laughs> middle class or high class Roman citizens. So it's a beautiful find. Someone like me would have had this. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. 
Hello there, time for the wash up. Um, I'm washed up and all my finds are washed up. So I've got a nice haul of pottery to talk through with you. So most of what we found uh, is Roman. So all this material here uh, is Roman and mostly locally produced, I would say. And there's a little bit of Victorian to have a look at at the end. So by far the most common fabric is reduced wear. So it starts off as red clay, um, but due to a lack of oxygen in the kiln, it's reduced into this grey or black finish here. There are some bits that are oxidised, that is oxygen has been allowed to remain in the kiln and so the clay has stayed uh, a reddish colour. Whether that is by accident or design I'm not sure, I guess uh, it's uh, by design so you can have a complementary red vessel with your black vessels. Generally speaking, there are two classes of vessels. There's fine wares, which would have been suitable for the table, uh, which are quite a clean clay and sometimes have decoration and uh, very few inclusions. And then there are more coarse vessels, which would be suitable for uh, kitchen, cooking, storage, transportation, industrial purposes. And a lot of these are shell tempered. So these white flecks that you can see are shell, which has been added into the clay to open it up and help with the firing. Uh, and there's a great variety from tiny pieces of shell, uh, just a little scattering. Very small little fragments of shell through to really shelly, where there's almost more shell than pot. Some of the pottery fragments are wasters from the local kilns. Um, it's a well-known fact that there's a lot of kilns on the marshes where we were looking, um, but some are definitely domestic. Um, this one has heavy traces of burning on the outside, so I imagine it was a cooking vessel. Um, a lot of the vessels are large but still very thin walled and it takes a very skillful potter to draw up such a large thin walled vessel uh, in the clay, wet clay. So I do admire the technical expertise of the Roman potters, very impressive. Uh, a lot of the finer vessels fall into the category of black burnished, uh, black obviously because of the colour, burnishing due to the surface treatment. You can just see that shiny line there, slightly broken. So that is burnishing and that's been uh, basically a decorative technique using a smooth stone or tool uh, just to compress the surface of the clay uh, to produce that shiny finish on it. So that can be uh, bands and zones of decoration or just lines. So these are burnished lines, typical crisscross Roman pattern. So some are scratched slightly into the clay, but others are just literally burnished on the surface of the pot to make a very nice decorative motif on this jar. Other shirts have uh, scratched decoration on them. Uh, finer parallel lines would have been made with a bone tool, a ribbed bone tool. Um, but um, simple scratched incised decoration might have been done with a handful of straw. Uh, and this is decorative, but also serves as a sort of non-slip coating uh, if you're taking a wet pot of food somewhere, 
then that helps with the grip as well as being decorative. Um, these would probably be earlier, uh, I would say first century AD. In terms of form, uh, jars predominate, so storage jars or cooking vessels, um, jars of that sort uh, with typically rounded Roman rims. Uh, there were a few bowls. Here's an interesting rounded base. Bases were very simple, we didn't see any pedestal bases as such. And the base of a platter. Whoops. An open form. Uh, this would be imitating a Samian form of some kind. We also have the rim of a large flagon, uh, equivalent of a jug. Uh, there are obvious um, many finds of beakers from this pottery industry and smaller vessels. Um, we didn't find any of those, perhaps because we, you know, our, the, our eye was caught by the larger pieces. A particularly interesting group of finds uh, was material in this fabric. Uh, just looks like a bit of old brick or tile, um, but it's actually bricotage, uh, which is the remains of salt extraction industries, which were often carried on in estuaries. Um, so this is part of a pedestal, which would have supported a large ceramic uh, tray in which the salt would have been evaporated by heating. I mean, the seawater would have been evaporated, uh, leaving the salt residue behind. So they often have traces of burning on them, very coarse fabrics mixed with organic material, which has burnt out. So you can see the remains of that on the surface there, probably straw, something like that. You can see on the surface where the organic material has burnt out uh, and you can see the effects of the heat on the outside and the original colour on the inside. There is a slight possibility this might be a kiln prop for supporting pottery but given that we found these in an estuary uh, where there is history of salt extraction um, right from the Bronze Age onwards it makes sense that these pieces are bricotage uh, and I'll show a photo of a complete um, pedestal support. Having a look at post-Roman, uh, we've got some Victorian pottery which has been dumped. So we found nothing between Roman and Victorian, no medieval or early post-medieval. Um, but this is presumably rubbish that has come from London. Now I actually spotted this in one of the other mud pies videos. So they found it, left it behind and I found it again. I had to take it with me because it's just got so much information on it. Uh, Mackay, he's not the publican, he's probably a brewer. Brewery Tap, Britain Street, Kings Road, Chelsea. And this applies to the Builders Arms uh, on the Kings Road, 13 Britain Street, Kings Road, Chelsea. Uh, and it was recorded as the Brewery Tap in 1884, um, so this gives a rough date for this rather nice flagon here. Another piece, uh, the rim of a plate or platter, which can be fairly closely dated, uh, Balmoral pattern, W and HB is the maker and it's got a registry number. So in 1884 the diamond registration pattern was replaced by registry numbers starting with number one and this pattern is registered as 5455 uh, which dates it from 1884. Um, obviously that was the first date the pattern was registered so it could have been produced afterwards and broken even later but it gives you a starting date for your piece of pottery. And hand-painted shard, uh, simple decoration. This is often cheaper than 
transfer printed with simple flower patterns uh, on it, produced by fairly unskilled labour, second half of the 19th century. A little bit of a Chinese ginger jar with just the traces of some blue and white decoration on it there, again towards the end of the 19th century. Part of a gentleman, figurine, again 19th century, and the ubiquitous willow pattern, but rather a nice piece with the birds, a bit of a wonky handle there. This would have come from a large water jug or ewer, maybe with another handle on the other side to help lifting it when it was full, or maybe from a tureen, something like that, some large piece. And then we found quite a surprising number of anti-aircraft shell heads. Um, so these obviously from the Second World War, uh, plenty of activity over Kent during the Battle of Britain and then later in the war the V1 coming over, anti-aircraft batteries situated there. Uh, these are really heavy bits of bronze, brass, um, so imagine that coming at your aircraft at several hundred miles an hour would have been quite a frightening prospect and then I guess that's the fuse in the top which would trigger at a set time timed fuses or on impact maybe. So it was really great to get out again after having to stay away from long distance travel and going to London uh, for such a long time due to the virus. So I will be out more regularly now and get back to the Thames as well. Um, but thank you so much to father and daughter mudlarking legends, the fearless mud pies. Uh, do subscribe to their channel, it is a wonderful channel. Uh, that's mud pies on YouTube. Uh, and on Instagram you can follow them, the mud pies. Um, but yeah, thank you so much again to Josie and Andy for taking me to such a special place and helping me find some wonderful bits of pottery that we can discuss.